Welcome to Dia Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's show, city volunteers in both the United States and China are holding winter relief distributions to help the needy. We meet Wong Yuxiang, a former internet addict who is finding meaning to life through new hobbies and interests. And in Taiwan, as many grew up watching Doraemon and Crayon Xinjiang, we meet the two senior voice narrators of these cartoon characters. We kick off today's program in China as city volunteers continue to distribute winter aid supplies to elderly residents in Hubei province. And on the other side of the planet in the United States, volunteers in Nevada act as Santa Claus, bringing children gifts for the coming Christmas holidays. In the United States, Las Vegas city volunteers are like Santa Claus as they deliver gifts to 10 students from low-income families. Thank you for coming to our school and giving us the gifts. Like, yeah, thank you. It's very nice and like, I'm like, uh, they're a blessing to go out to all the families in the East Coast. Besides presents, volunteers also show images from the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. Many students were moved to adopt a bamboo coin bank to make a difference. We want to use this opportunity to teach the children that giving is better than receiving and to continue to spread the love. The, the piggy bank for the, um, for the um, Hurricane Sandy and they to save money and help out. City volunteers in China are heading into the mountains to bring a little warmth to the hearts of local residents in Hubei province. After everyone has had their warm porridge, medical staff help local residents measure their blood pressure. Some seniors are unable to carry the heavy bags of rice, so volunteers help lift them onto a car and help transport them home. The upcoming new year will be much warmer for these residents with Siji by their side. The senior is enjoying the love from volunteers and smiles in happiness. Arriving at Senior Sha's house, volunteers help move the aid supplies and also help the seniors try on their new winter jackets. Neighbors also visit to share in this joyous day, and this family picture captures the moment forever. In the United States, students and parents at the Tsuji San Jose Academy continue to raise funds for Hurricane Sandy survivors, with students giving up their pocket money and one parent even donating 20 cheese pizzas for the fundraising efforts. Donating their allowances to the fundraising efforts for Hurricane Sandy survivors, students from the Tsuji San Jose Academy in the United States are all eager to help. One fourth grader Chen Weizhen donated a crisp $100 bill. <laughs> Students are not the only ones donating funds. One parent, a pizza shop owner, is donating money from pizza sales to the fundraising efforts. It's really about helping out each other, as fundraising is hard work. Actually, donating a little money each month doesn't affect our lives too much, but at the same time, that money can help so many more people. It's something everyone can do. Tsuji's humanitarian efforts are spreading far and wide with the help of students and parents at the Tsuji Academy in San Jose. As 2012 marked the 60th anniversary of the accession of Queen Elizabeth II, countries within the Commonwealth of Nations held events to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee. Following the tradition, a Diamond Jubilee medal is being awarded in Canada and other Commonwealth nations. To thank the selfless dedication of the Tsuji Foundation over the past 20 years, the Canada government awarded the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee medal to Tsuji. Here at the Parliament Building in Ottawa, city volunteers arrived to receive an esteem honor presented by Canadian government. I, on behalf of all Canadians, I'd like to thank Master Cheng Yang for her many years of spiritual guidance for the members of Tu Chi 
in Canada and around the world for having given such a magnificent expression of the highest forms of Buddhist practice of love for all of creation. Recognizing Suji's selfless dedication in Canada for the past 20 years, Canadian government awarded Suji with the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal. Millions of hours of volunteer work, tens of millions of dollars raised in compassion demonstrated for those less fortunate in Canada and around the world is a great uh, testament uh, to uh, the Master and to all of those uh, who have followed her teachings in Suchi. So thank you very much. Upholding the ideal of helping the needy, Suji volunteers continue to hand out food and winter air supplies in Canada and assist those who suffer from disasters around the world. Here in Taiwan's Jiayi, Mr. Huang was afraid of seeking treatment for the wound on his leg as he could not afford the expensive transportation and medical cost. Thankfully, the arrival of Tima doctors gave him a ray of hope. And with the help of Tima doctors, Grandma Yang, who never fully recovered from her stroke, was shown the correct way to carry out her rehabilitation. It's only 8 o'clock in the morning, yet the Jiayi Tima team has already arrived at the home of Mr. Huang. Lifting Huang's pants, what follows is a shocking sight. His legs are covered with wounds, big and small. Worried about the transportation and medical costs, Mr. Huang delayed seeking treatment. Thankfully, team of doctors came just at the right time. If the wounds are not treated, it will only get worse. So we have arranged for him to get proper treatment at the hospital tomorrow. Also kept indoors due to sickness is Grandma Yang, who is bedridden after suffering a stroke. It was not until Tima's visit that this grandma learned that she had been doing her rehabilitation incorrectly. <laughs> Tima doctors accompany Grandma Yang as she practices over and over. Through the repeated movements, Grandma Yang regains her confidence and promises the doctors to work hard so on their next visit they can see her improvement. <laughs> Today in our continuing series on internet addiction, we meet graduate student Wong Yu-Shang. Wong was formerly addicted to internet games for nearly seven years, but has now successfully turned what was once an addiction into an occasional hobby. He says the key to leaving his addiction behind was finding an activity and interest. Let's now take a look at the world he once lived in and how he was finally able to leave it all behind. In the real world, Wong Yuxiang is a second-year grad student, but online, he is this guardian angel. Wong began playing this online game seven years ago when he was still in high school. Time that was formerly used to study was now spent leveling up his character. Before, these monsters would kill me with one hit. Now I can kill them with one blow. <laughs> This feeling of achievement have motivated Wong to invest countless hours and hundreds of dollars into his characters. These are all my characters. There's about 100 here. In the past seven years, I've spent around 800 to 1,000 US dollars on this game. However, the biggest attraction is that Wong has been able to meet many friends online. It is this human factor that makes the online world seem just as real as the real world. If a team decks my character, in some instances, they will not succeed their missions. Although maybe it is not like that, but that is how I feel. I feel like I'm really important and needed. In the past, I played this like crazy. Without a computer at home, I went to the local internet cafe. This is 
In the past, even if I had a lot of homework, I would play this game instead because when I'm online, I have no pressure. I knew after I finished playing, my homework would still be there, but at least I didn't have to worry about it for a while. Escaping from the pressures of school through games continued until Wong's second year in college, after which he was slowly able to leave the game behind. When I was a freshman in college, I still play online games a lot. Probably two-thirds of my day was spent playing them. However, as I started to get better in tennis, I found it to be more interesting than playing online. Whether or not you get addicted to online games depends on if you are maintaining a connection to the real world or not. You need to find activities outside of the internet that inspire you to strive to meet goals and find achievement. In that way, you will obviously also need to interact with others in the world. Since playing tennis has become more interesting than playing video games, Wong has been able to put his online gaming on the back burner. In fact, his thesis is about online games and why people play. I probably would not ever play this type of character, but I look to see how they are playing it. Like the saying, water carries a boat but also capsizes it. Online activities and games are tools that can have a constructive place in our lives, but at the same time need to be respected for the pitfalls they hold for the unwary. Staying in Taiwan, in Tainan, Xu Mingzhen and Tai Li Zhu met Ji when their son was hospitalized at the Daling Ji General Hospital. And during that time, the family experienced the love and care of the medical staff and Ji volunteers. After their son passed away, the couple dedicated themselves to recycling as a way to reciprocate Ji's kindness. The family has now become more harmonious, and the couple's daughter has even decided to follow their footsteps. We went to receive blessings from Master Zhen Yan. Tai Li Zhu's family just attended the year-end blessing ceremony, after which they came straight to the recycling station. It was during the time their son was hospitalized at the Daling Ji General Hospital that the family first learned of Ji. With gratitude, the family devoted themselves to recycling, reaping many unexpected rewards as a result. We have received a lot of care from Tsuji volunteers, and we have a harmonious atmosphere at home now. When my parents are doing recycling, they even share tips on how to sort recyclables better. Doing recycling has allowed Tai to deal with the loss of her son and her husband, Xu Mingshen, to get rid of many years of bad habits. I gambled our house away and we lost our home, then my son passed away. But since we began recycling, I've changed a lot. I quit smoking and got rid of my other bad habits. With joy in their hearts, the family has a message for everyone. In Taiwan, when we turn on the TV, we have a variety of channels to choose from, with several of them showing cartoons or movies from abroad. However, these films or cartoons all need to be first narrated in our language before they are ready to be broadcast. In today's feature report on Taiwan's fading industries, we meet two voice narrators who are responsible for voicing a variety of cartoon characters, including Doraemon and Crayon Xinjiang. Let's take a look. We are all probably familiar with this voice when we withdraw money from the ATM. However, it is hard to imagine that this is also the voice that was part of our childhood. I think most of those who work in this industry are quite optimistic and are probably a bit sensitive as well, so we all work together really well. 
This is also why sometimes we don't even get a break for the weekend and have been in this job for three decades now. I have mixed feelings towards Doraemon. I love the cartoon. It's an old-time favorite for many, because of its storyline and the fact that Doraemon is a kind-hearted character. But on the other hand, when you have been narrating a character for decades, and when I see the many accessories and toys of Doraemon out there, you feel under pressure. After the name change, we spent another two years narrating through the hundreds of episodes. Senior voice narrator Chen Meizhen has lost count of the number of cartoon characters she has voiced. With her unique talent, Chen has made a name of herself in the field. The seemingly simple job is in fact quite tiresome, and some of these narrators go home not wanting to talk anymore. It is really a tiring job sometimes, especially when we are voicing a movie. If the movie is 90 minutes, it will take us two weeks. So each day we only produce a few minutes. We have to practice each sentence repeatedly to make sure we match the character's lips while talking. Chen almost had to sacrifice her New Year's Eve to produce movies for the Chinese New Year. The senior narrator often voices more than three characters in a single film. Another narrator who is well known for voicing cartoon characters is Jiang Du Hui. The cartoon characters I narrate include Crayon Xinjiang, Chibi Maruko Jan, Detective Conan, and a few others. Our emotions go up and down with the character we are voicing. So normally, when the character cries, I cry too. Voice narrators are similar to actors who threw themselves into the act to ensure they put on their best performance. Actors focus on their acting skills, whereas narrators are focused on their voicing skills. We are just like the actors. After a certain age, we will no longer take leading roles, but supporting roles. There will be the younger generation to take over. Like what I just said, we must all do our best in narrating a character. The new narrators can voice an elderly person, but a senior narrator can't voice a younger person. The day will come for these senior voice narrators to retire. However, it is still in doubt that anyone can do as good of a job as these narrators. A person's voice can make a deep impression on others, and these narrators will continue to share their passion for life through their voice. Traditionally, Taiwanese residents will drink herbal tonics during the cold weather to keep warm and as a dietary supplement. Stores that sell ginger duck soup and lamb hot pot are especially popular. However, a senior in Taizhong City was sent to the hospital after drinking two bowls of ginger duck soup. Doctors say that the soup contains a large amount of sodium and thus are harmful to those with chronic disease. Healthy residents should also watch their sodium intake and realize that one bowl of herbal tonic per meal is more than enough. In Taiwan, once the temperature drops, those restaurants selling herbal tonics are packed. This tradition of drinking herbal tonics to keep warm in colder weather has continued in today's society. A 77-year-old senior who suffers from kidney disease was warned by his doctor to watch his diet. However, he did not listen and drank two bowls of ginger duck soup. A few days later, he suffered from major water retention. Most broths contain a lot of sodium. Inside the body, sodium retains water, and patients will experience bloating and have difficulty breathing. As water and toxins in the urine aren't expelled from the body, this can pose a serious issue for patients with chronic diseases. If patients with chronic kidney disease watch their diet properly, then we can prevent their kidneys from progressing into the next stage of disease. Does this mean those who don't suffer from kidney disease can drink as much herbal tonic as they like? 
After one portion of herbal tonic, if you feel dry mouthed and thirsty, this means you are not suited to eating this type of food. Doctors advise even for those who are healthy, one herbal tonic per meal is enough. Also, the way to keep warm is to exercise regularly, eat a healthy diet, and wear winter clothing. As Tsuji continues to hold its year-end blessing ceremonies throughout Taiwan, the Tsuji Taipei Eastern District's liaison office held its year-end blessing ceremony on December 16th. To ensure the participants all had a good time, Tsuji volunteer Lin Shuhui poured her heart and soul into decorating the venue. Using simple elements to create a colorful canvas, Tsuji volunteer Ling Shu Hui not only knows how to decorate, but she has brought these same aesthetics to vegetarian dishes. Youngsters find meatless dishes less attractive, but we can use simple ingredients and seasoning it to make it more flavorful, so they can learn to like them. This is how we are promoting vegetarianism. Staff members of this local company invited family and friends to attend this year's blessing ceremony, and many are participating for the first time. We heard some great ideas, for instance, on video piety. There are many connections with people who are living our lives now, and so we found connections between our hearts. Those that once received help turn around to help others as well. I feel that no matter what we do, even if it's volunteering, the people who benefit the most are ourselves. In serenity and calm, each participant reflects back on the year, and amid the blessings, they also pray for a peaceful and auspicious new year. Also in Taipei City, the Xichun Borough Head of Xingyi District invited city volunteers to take part in a second-hand charity sale on December 8th, in which the proceeds went to various charity organizations. City volunteers are trying their best to promote this toy because it was a boy's favorite toy, but he gave it up to support the charity sale. This belonged to one of the children at daycare. When he heard about the charity sale, he made a decision to donate his favorite toy for charity. The main purpose of the second-hand charity sale, organized by the borough head of Xitun, is to give items a second lease of life and at the same time helping those in need. In recent years, Xitun borough have promoted the concept of recycling. The proceeds from this sale will be donated to charity organizations, including Siji. The two-hour charity sale raised approximately $5,080, and the borough had donated this money to Tsuji, hoping to help those in greater need. After Thailand experienced severe flooding last year, city volunteers organized hot meal distributions in Banpla Township of Ayutthaya province. At the end of this year, volunteers once again visited the township, bringing 20 kilo bags of rice to every care recipient and seniors above 60 years of age. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday with loved ones. Love's our small wish for you to enjoy. We wish you forever peace and joy. Love walks tall while sharing smiles.